There's a beautiful story that takes place during the caliphate of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. And it shows you the true justice and brilliance of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Of course, everyone who was alive at the time knew very well that when you needed justice, you go toward Ali. So there was a situation when two mothers, two women, both claimed uh, that they were the mother of a child. And no matter how much investigation they did, no matter how much they researched, no matter who they asked, they couldn't figure out who, just who, the mother of this child was. So they took the woman and the child to Ali ibn Abi Talib. So they told him the situation. They said, oh, Imam Ali, Ali salam, these two women, they both claim to be the mother of this child. What should we do? Imam Ali, Ali salam, says, I have the solution. Bring me my sword. Why? Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the child in two and give one half to each woman. As soon as he said that, one of the women stood up and she said, I was lying. I am not the mother. That woman is in fact the mother of this child. Imam Ali looked at her and he turned toward the congregation and he said, this woman who just stood up and said, I am not the mother, that is the true mother of this child. Why? Because a mother would rather see her child in the hands of someone else than see her child before any harm. This is the greatness and the justice of Ali ibn Talib And the reason I mention this story is because when we narrate the tragedy of Fatima Zahra when we narrate the, the, everything that happened, some people turn around and say, how could it be that all this can happen in the house of the one who killed 35 at Badr? In the house of the one who stood by himself with just a few people against the thousands of Hunayn? How can it be that he can allow this to happen? The answer is very simple. The same way that a woman would give away her own child rather than see it killed, he was happy to give away Islam to the hands of the people in power at the time rather than control it himself because if he was to rise up and fight and defend his wife and fight for the caliphate, Islam itself would be destroyed there and then. So it's here... And as we know, of course, the Holy Prophet himself told Ali ibn Abi Talib, patience, make sure you have patience after I pass away. And it's here that Imam Ali alayhi salam reminisces and wonders what would have happened if only the Prophet had not told him patience. If only he was allowed to fight for everything that he lost. If only he was allowed to draw his sword and take those who are responsible to justice. He says, if only... If only I were not handcuffed by the Prophet's words, if only. If only patience did not become my biggest enemy, if only. I was battling marhab with the Prophet watching me, if only. I were not in chains with my burning house taunting me. If only revelation descended like it once did to my house. If only evelation were not so burdensome and weighty. If only not so many trials came with being named Ali. I faced 10,000 at Hunayn, but wish I couldn't face today. If only Allah wanted me to be the Ali of Badr only. If only Allah wanted me to be the Ali of Badr only, where I'd tear the battle in two, killing half of them easily. If only the house of Allah Allah have kept me within its axis. No axis could break it open. Before my mother it gave way. But here we are. Muhammad is gone. And Islam has begun. I cradle Islam in my hands. Like a child in infancy. The prophet's anger is fueled. And I can see his grave shaken. And I become the shuddering door of Muhammad's shaking city. And I become the shuddering door of Muhammad's shaking city. If only my great Lord revealed a second surah to Tawbah. And told me kill them wherever you find them. The men of idolatry. I'd be a lion again in battle only without Ahmed. Meaning it would be war only without Allah's mercy. Mercy. If only my Dhulfiqar came alive and said Bismillah and the same way men feast, I would feast on my enemy. The enemy in me I defeat. The enemy in me I defeat as I feast on their flesh, defending Zahra and belief in Allah. The same thing really. I'd become a dragon and Arabia would become in awe. I'd become a dragon and Arabia would be in awe and take back my kingdom for the orphan, the poor 
and the needy. I'd become a lion. I'd become a lion defending its woman and its pride. Except its woman with the planets of the sky. She just disappear. I'd leave my house to the sound of those who I've killed cheering my name. I would leave my house to the sound of those who I've killed cheering my name. I'd unsheathe my sword and I'd hear Allah himself cry out Ali. I'd come back bathed in their blood with not a cut on my body and that's the only time anything najis could ever touch me. If only men were good and loved Allah and loved beauty and wanted goodness for this world and not tragedy after tragedy. If only men did not want to see orphans cry and widows lonely. I do not want the caliphates but I do want to kill poverty. I do not want power but I do want to see all men fed. I do not want a throne. I want a mountain of bread I can give away. I am the justice of Allah manifested on this earth. It's because of me that the planets rotate and worship divinity. I am the secret of this world and its secrets sleep deep in my chest. Jibra'il descends and he has meetings with me daily. What overflows in me sprinkles in all other men. If only men understood this and did not throw their heaven away. If only my house was not set alight with Zahra behind the door. If only my house was not set alight with Zahra behind the door if only he did not push the door and break the rib of my lady if only she did not cry out ya Fidda, and instead cried out ya Ali if only Mohsin did not need to ask for what sin was I guilty if only my children did not have to watch their mother in pain if only they did not have to see her cheeks slap so tragically if only they did not know what it feels like to be orphaned if only they did not grow in a house so dark and lonely but I can't keep saying if only I can't keep thinking what if I can't keep saying if only and I can't keep thinking what if men shouldn't dwell on things that might have happened in different ways knowing that Allah is watching is the only way that I can march on if I can lift the door of Khaybar then I can get through this surely so I uncradle myself and I get up from the corner I uncradle myself and I get up from the corner. I was there because I had felt my wife's rib when washing her body. I wipe my tears and I carry on with a broken heart, feeling just like broken bone, and wait for Fatima to be avenged by my grandson, the Mahdi. And I wait for Fatima to be avenged by my grandson, the Mahdi.